Good morning, everybody, from Manchester Airport again, twice in two months. Starting to become a habit. So this is Terminal 3, a very quiet Terminal 3, and as I've kind of seen this morning, it's pretty much exclusively Ryanair these days, with the odd BA flight and Logan Air thrown in for good measure. So I've kind of given up with Priority Pass here. There is a Priority Pass lounge in each of the terminals here at Manchester, but they kind of they kind of look at you like you're a bit of a leper these days if you've got a Priority Pass at Manchester Airport. So I really have given up with it now. So I'm just in a place called Pretoria Milano for breakfast at a whopping £17, including a glass of orange. So I'll show you that in a moment. So yeah, very quiet terminal. Ryanair, pretty much, with some BA and Logan Air, as I say. And I should tell you where I'm going today, of course. So today is travel day, very exciting. Another travel day down to the Canary Islands, again, where else? And today I'm going down to Grand Canaria, which is uh, one of the large islands down there. And really looking forward to it. So as always, I'll show you around the airport experience. I'll show you on board the flight today down to Grand Canaria with Ryanair. Should be a fairly quiet flight. They were still selling it yesterday at just 25 quid. And from there, once we land at Grand Canaria, fairly late evening flight tonight. Uh, should be down about six o'clock, picking up an electric Fiat. And breakfast is served. The Massimo breakfast. So we've got a bit of everything, beans, black pudding, mushroom, tomato, egg, sausages. Terminal 3 is actually quite a nice terminal to use and it always has been for me. This is the first terminal where I ever got British Airways gold status flying from here to London in a previous life and previous job. So quite a nice terminal. So yeah, good memories here, right? So as you may have seen in my last video when we flew from Terminal 2 down to Lanzarote, I said then it was probably the best experience I'd had in 20 years using this airport, but security were a bit grumpy, as they normally are here. But I have to say, in fairness, in fairness, this morning's experience has been really good. Security were really jolly, and don't get me wrong, I didn't have to queue, I was straight to the head of the queue. But, well, I was straight through security, no problem at all. There was no queue, because it's just so quiet here. I got this flight for, oh, I don't know, this flight was just £26, including the extra legroom seat as well, which gives you priority boarding and the two cases on board, so it works for me. Four and a half hour flight for £26, you can't really beat that, can you? So let me show you around Terminal 3. It's probably the smallest terminal here at Manchester, so there's not an awful lot to show you. And it's one of those situations that you get every now and again, where because it's so quiet, people with cameras get noticed, as small as my little camera is. <laughs> you still get noticed, so uh, I might just have to be uh, fairly quiet with it. But yeah, so far so good. The airport experience this morning has been every bit as good as any of the other airports that I use around the world. So well done Manchester Airport and the good runway views as well. Uh, literally the only thing I've paid extra for this morning has been the breakfast so far. And with such a cheap flight and such a quiet, easy terminal to use, Oh, you just can't knock it, can you? This is just a dream for people like me who fly a lot. Most of the flights with Ryanair, one BA flight, one Fly B, a couple of Logan Airs, but I think they've been cancelled. That's pretty much it today from here. What an easy terminal to use. So that's our aircraft there, just arrived on stand, a Boeing 737-800 with Ryanair. So travel day today, what does it involve? Well, it's made up of four parts as usual. You've seen the airport experience here at Terminal 3, which is one of the best I've had. So this is the second flight from Manchester Airport in as many months where I've had a relatively trouble-free experience. And this morning was even better because security was so much nicer. All in all, I've got nothing to complain about, which is unusual for me here at Manchester, as you know, if you've seen my previous videos, but let's not complain, let's not find any problems, let's just hope we get on board and get away as soon as we can. So today's video is all about my trip down to Grand Canaria, and what you'll see in a future video is the seven best things to do in Grand Canaria, and we're going to do some urbexing as well of those haunted buildings, of which there are quite a few abandoned on the island so stay tuned if you want to see that that'll be the video that follows this one so back to today it's a video of four parts you've seen the airport we'll see the flight on board i'll tell you a bit more about that once we get on board part three will be 
picking up the hire car and something that isn't that well represented on YouTube at the moment is can you actually use an electric car in the Canary Islands because there are some pros and cons and I'll go into that when we pick the car up later and I'll show you around the car when we get it. I got it for a really good price at Seacar who are not sponsoring this video. And the fourth part is arriving at my hotel and again got a really good deal on the hotel. It's a duplex suite so we've got in layman's terms an upstairs and a downstairs which will be ideal for when I watch The Apprentice tomorrow night. So the duplex suite which I've got tonight at the hotel and I'll show you when we get there which will be the final part of this video on travel day is a duplex suite and I got it for I think about £90 or the equivalent of £90 a night. Never stayed here before it's in Mas Palomas which is a, one of the resorts I really like staying at in Gran Canaria and again I'll show you around that resort in the next video but really excited really good to be back in the air as always I haven't been able to travel as much and if I remember to I'll tell you a bit more about why that is once we get up in the air and the other benefit this time of the year which I'm really hoping for because it's a really nice day down in Gran Canaria it's about five degrees above zero here at the moment in Manchester down in Gran Canaria it's going to hit a high of about 23 24 degrees Celsius at uh, about five o'clock this afternoon which is about an hour before this lands so I'm hoping we'll get some fairly good shots some good video just as the sun's starting to drop but we'll see as we get down there it is a clear night apparently it's the weather forecast really good for the next few days down in Gran Canaria as it has been the last few days so that's what it's all about of course that's why I go there one of the reasons I go to the Canary Islands because you get the year-round heat and before I forget for my US viewers there is now you may be well be aware of this of course but there is now a direct flight from the US down to Tenerife I think it operates three times a week I'll pop a link with some more information down below so yeah I think it operates three times a week I think it flies on a 757 what else perfect aircraft for that route I guess from one of the New York airports I want to say Newark might be wrong I'll check so welcome back to Ryan Air. 737-800. I'm not even sure if you can hear my voice, hopefully you can. It's very noisy compared to the Airbus 321 that we flew on with Jet 2 down to Lanz Rossi a few weeks ago. That said, I am a lot closer to the engines, which probably explains it. So, as always, a meal review on board the low-cost airlines. So you'll remember with Jet 2, you can buy any one of, I think, eight or ten main courses in advance, so you're guaranteed to get what you want. With Ryanair it's slightly different, as with Jet 2, they have a range of different meals and I'll show you the menu in a minute, but you can't pre-order them so you just have to hope they've got what you want in stock and in my experience generally speaking they do. So today I've gone with the Bolognese, the Bolognese pasta, a meat dish with packs of Pringles and a beer and that cost €12.99. So very very slightly more expensive than Jet 2. The Jet 2 main meals I think cost £10 but the difference is with this one you're getting an alcoholic drink so if you go for a standard soft drink like a Sprite or a Coke that's going to cost you a similar amount actually cheaper because it's because on Ryanair they charge you in euro so it's 9 99 and the other difference is that on Ryanair they take Amex which is quite good because I collect the Amex points on Jet 2 it's Visa MasterCard, just handy to know what I get. But so far, a very, very happy flight. So uh, as with those Muller yogurt type things, they come heated obviously, you don't have to do that yourself. But you get the bolognese sauce here, you get a little pot, the pasta here, and you just tip the bolognese over in, mix it up and eat it. And actually I have to say it's quite nice, it, you know, for airline food, especially low cost airline food, you know it's not silver service it's not fine dining but it does the job and it's not stupidly priced so with lunch service tidied away let me tell you a bit more about today's flight so as I said at the start normally on this route I would have flown with Jet 2 because I like Jet 2 I like their Airbus A321s for the simple reason that they've got on certain parts of the aircraft just two seats near the emergency exit instead of the usual three so it's just less crowded when I'm travelling on my own, it's very rare somebody wants to sit next to me. I don't take offence, of course. <laughs> but today's flight is on one of Ryanair's older 737-800s. And a quick tip for you is, if you look on Google Flights, it'll tell you which aircraft type is on your route. 
So I don't think Ryanair sells you when you book it, and Jetsu certainly don't. So if you have a look on Google Flights, it'll tell you whether, not, not just whether it's a 737 or a 757 or whatever, A321, whatever it is, it'll also tell you what type it is. And that's critical here with Ryanair because they also now operate the 737 MAX. Now I've yet to find a MAX. I've got one booked and I'll bring you a review later in the first quarter of 2023. But a key benefit of the 737 MAX, just like the 321 Airbus, is they also have those two seats instead of the three over the emergency exit. It's a bit further back on the MAX, but if you book Ryanair, and if you look at row 28, which is the seat that I've booked that I'll bring you the review for, there's only two seats either side of the aisle. So again, less crowded, you've got less people sat next to you, and 99% of the time I'm flying on my own somewhere. So on today's flight, I got this emergency exit row seat in row 17. And as you can see, I've got nobody sat next to me. So today's flight cost a base fare of 25 pounds, but actually came to 65 because as with Ryanair, you can literally pay for anything you want. If you want to fly for 25 quid, you can do that. But you're not going to get an assigned seat as I did. You're not going to get an emergency exit seat, which is what I paid extra for. You're not going to get the meal. Again, that's extra. Plus, I also paid for priority boarding. Not particularly for priority boarding in itself, but because with priority boarding, you can bring two cases on board, like with EasyJet. And that's key for me, because obviously, doing this sort of stuff, I've got loads of camera equipment with me, which just never fits into one bag. But you know, for the four or five days I'm down in the Canaries on this trip, if you wanted to do it for 24.99, you could absolutely do that. You could absolutely just pay your 25 pounds, pack all of your clothes into a rucksack. You could bring a laptop, bring your phone and all the chargers and stuff. And you could do it for 50 pounds return. And I have done that before to the Canaries. And when you consider for your, say, I don't know, 50 pounds, 55 pounds return, including taxes, and government taxes in the UK are very high, don't forget. That's really good value for money because what that's buying you is three and a half thousand miles in the air, at least, depending on which island you fly to, the Canaries. And it's also the best part of 10 hours in the sky as well. Again, depending on which island you fly to. But overall, you know, you can't beat for value for money, especially at this time of the year. Good old Brian Air. Here's quite nice as well. So we are just coming towards the end of the flight now. Star to start descend down to Grand Canaria. Just in the distance there. Don't know if the camera will pick it up. It's outside. It. And if I could just take a moment to say a huge thanks to my Patreon supporters, such as James, Joe and Kieran, who helped me to bring these videos to you month in, month out. In particular, and timely with that new 757 flight direct from Newark, we welcome Joshua Bedell. Joshua, thanks for your support and enjoy the video. Just like that, I am in Grand Canaria. Welcome to the Canary Islands. So, just heading to get the electric car now. I'm hoping they've got an electric car. They don't have many of them, but that's what I've booked, so we'll see. And I'll let you know. I'll be right back. All right, so that was really simple. Just literally five minutes since I last spoke to you. And we have the car. Just need to go and get it from the usual place. And it is a Fiat 500 electric and we'll see what it's like. There's a reason why I specifically wanted the electric car. And, well, there's a few reasons, actually. Because it's going to be a bit of a challenge here in the Canary Islands, I suspect. But I'll go into that in a future video. The next video after this, in fact. But for now, let's go find the car. And then... Let's... Yeah, it's this way, isn't it? Let's go find the car. The Fiat 500, the electric. And then... I'll show you the hotel. Hopefully they've got a room for me. Uh, right, couldn't remember there for a moment where C car was. Right, we have the keys for the car. And I think, 
She gave me this as well, which I think is a fuel card. So I don't think you pay to charge when you hire from Seacar as part of the electric deal. You just, I don't know, I might be really wrong about that, but I'm sure somebody told me that. Anyway, let's try and find the car. Right, so we're looking for a Fiat 500 registration 8766, which is in D, D14, she said. D14. What's the registration? 8766. What colour is it? Celestial blue. That sounds rather groovy, doesn't it? Let's press the button, see if it's going to find it. Oh, it's here. <laughs> here it is. This is the Celestial Blue Fiat 500. So it should be unlocked. There we go. There's all the charging cables. So this is either... This experiment's going to go really well or it's going to go really wrong. But, uh, yeah, let me get the cases in and I'll show you around. It's not a very big boot, is it? All right. Having said it's not a very big boot, <clears throat> it got both of my cases in, which is decent enough, I suppose, but there is just me on this trip. So let's have a look around. So just a two-door, 100% electric. It's a smart enough looking car, and that looks like it's not pearlescent paint, possibly. I'm not sure about the colour, I haven't made my mind up yet. I'm saying it's two-door, do you think these must open as well, surely? Hmm, not sure about that. Anyway, we'll find out as we go in the next video after this but for the time being let me just show you let's just find the route to the hotel and we can get going okay so I just need to adjust this seat it's a groovy little car there's actually a lot more room inside than you would imagine and so I just need to set up the sat nav and then we'll get going the seatbelt on this it doesn't automatically it doesn't it doesn't seem to sort of want to go back at all. I don't know if that's just oh, it's twisted. That's why. Typical hire car. Typical hire car. Right. Let's go and try and find a bottle of whiskey. And I'll use my curve card to pay for it. So you get the best rates and no exchange fees. If I use my Visa Mastercard or my Amex card, I get charged three percent. So, said spa shop was closed, unfortunately. So we'll carry on. I'm only about uh, three or four minutes from the hotel here. Right. Okay, let's get going. And let's get to the hotel, which is, according to the sat-nav, 1.6 miles away. Press brake pedal and press start button. Right. Oh, that throws you a jolly tune as well when you start it up. Right, okay, let's go. Need to get that aircon a bit higher. But then the problem is, it's going to zap the battery. It already has. Right, so press D. There we go. Right, let's go. So before anybody asks, I've got the, the camera on a uh, windscreen mount. So uh, I am driving with two hands on the steering wheel, honestly. So yeah, great to be back down in the Canary Islands again. I was only here four weeks ago, but an opportunity came up to spend a few days down here in Gran Canaria and do a bit of filming, which I really enjoy, as you all know. And so far, travel day has gone smoothly, That's as it did last time. Take the second exit onto Calle del Campo Internacional. Okay, let's do that. So... Everything's gone fine so far. You saw Manchester Airport, a really good experience. Probably the best again I've had in a, in a while. The flight with Ryanair, I know it's not everybody's cup of tea. I couldn't find fault with them, if I'm being honest. It was a very good flight. All exit road to myself. I'm now picking up the car. I booked an electric car. That's exactly what they gave me, which is great, because this is one of the things I want to test here on Gran Canaria. And you'll see that in a That's later the roundabout. Video. Take the second exit onto Calle del Campo Internacional. So we're just one mile away from the hotel. So what I'm going to do, I'm not going to try and find another shop for that whiskey. What I'm going to do is go check in, pop the camera back onto charge because the battery's just about dying now. And pop my shorts on and go out for a walk. Unfortunately, unfortunately, those electric bikes that you saw. At the roundabout, take the first exit onto Avenida de Tura Peridatui. 
All right, we're only a mile away now. And you can tell that we're in tourist land because we're about to enter Avenida de, Tour Avenida de Tour Operado Tui. So the street is named after Tui. An airline that I flew on last year and didn't rate at all. 767 was nice though. So, yeah, um, where was I? So I'm gonna go get my shorts on, put all my gear back onto charge because my batteries are literally flat. At the roundabout, take the second exit onto Avenida de Turipera de Tui. Something I've always talked about, I don't need it to. But to be fair, I don't know where I'm going here because I've never stayed at this hotel, which, as I said, so where was I? So yeah, so the third part, I'll just wait till I clear this roundabout, otherwise it's going to chirp again. Oh no, it didn't. Right, shall we try again? So, the third part today, so great airport, great flight, they gave me the car I wanted, which is good, it's going to be a good experiment, that'll be in the next video, uh, but what I was saying is, the those e-bikes that you saw me on in Lanzarote, they don't have them as many, you can hire them here, but it's a bit more formal, you have to sign a rental agreement, and they're with specific rental companies, rather than on Lanzarote in the resorts, where you can just use the app and pick them up. At the roundabout, take the second exit See. onto Avenida de Turipera de Tui. I got my script in before I started speaking. So we literally are following a Tui bus here as well. <laughs> right, so we're going right. Now this hotel used to be known as something else. And I'll tell you a bit more about it in the next video. But In a quarter of a mile, make a sharp left turn. Let's just park up and then I'll tell you, give you a quick pointer about this car. It's pluses and minuses already, ladies and gents, I don't mind saying. So, a quick couple of things to tell you about this car then, is I picked the car up, it was fully charged at 100% before I drove off from the airport half an hour ago, which is about, it's probably about a 12 mile drive, no, maybe more, 15, 15, 16 miles, and already it zapped 15% of its battery, which was my biggest fear about this car, because it's so small, the batteries can't be that big either. Then again, I suppose logic says that smaller car equals less power demand I guess but I've had the aircon on and I've driven at the speed limits 120 kilometers an hour on the uh, main motorway here the GC1 which is a concern I don't mind saying that is going to be a concern because the Canary Islands are nothing if not hilly and mountainous but it'll be a good experiment but whether I'm going to spend the next few days just sat constantly charging it somewhere I will say I've noticed a few charges just in the short time I've been here this afternoon that's pretty good. But anyway, like I say, we're here now. Let's go check out Los Calderones Suites, see what they're like. I hope it's good after this build-up. Righty-ho, let's go check in to the Calderones Hotel Suites. Uh, first impressions, there appears to have been a some kind of significant, I don't know, maybe a meteor strike. The car park could do with a bit of a, a tidy up. But nevertheless, I'm not sleeping in the car park, so, well, I don't think I am. In all fairness, actually, now you get to the entrance, it does look a bit smarter, I suppose. Let's go check in, see what it's like. So, first impressions seem pretty good, I have to say. I was uh, given a welcome glass of carver, and uh, the instructions to find the room were very clear. So we just need to head to 508, which is my room, apparently. 507, 508, which he thinks is me, I think so, let's just double check. 508. And so here we have the duplex room, which is really rather nice, I must say. So this is the lower level, where we've got the main television, and not much going on down here. This is an adjoining room if you want. But we don't want, so that's fine. And then over here we've just got <clears throat> just a little work desk, I guess, with the coffee, tea and coffee making facilities. And then let's take a wander upstairs to the sleeping area. And I think we've also got a balcony up here. Yeah, so, yeah, fairly decent sized bedroom. 
and then here we put the light on we've got the balcony all very smart and feels very modern I have to say it really does I think this will have proven to be a good choice so you can just sit here and have a drink pool view I did try to get an external view but it's very very busy this week there's the bar area there so I might just go and pop and have some drinks in a little while and then if you fancy watching The Apprentice in bed you've got a bedroom television as well so it all feels very modern I have to say and let's just take a quick look around the bathroom so the usual no bath but a shower's fine because I'm not really a fan of baths anyway. So that really does conclude today's travel day video down to here in Gran Canaria from Manchester in Northern England. I hope you've enjoyed it. I certainly have. Everything has worked to plan, which isn't always the case. We saw a good experience at Manchester, great experience with Ryanair, which isn't unusual, and clearly picking up the Fiat 500 electric was a five minute job, as always, very convenient with Seacar. And finally, here at the Caldera Suites. It's fabulous. I really like it. First impressions are really good. So, as I said, that's the end of the video. If you've liked the video, don't forget to give it. If you've liked the video, please give me a thumbs up and a subscribe. And in a future video, in the next video, in fact, what we'll do is we'll find out just how good that Fiat 500 is. But as we've seen today, it has been hard work. I've lost nearly, well, pretty much a whole day's filming because this car has had to sit on a charger. Well, this car's been on five chargers today in total. Exploring the seven best things to see here on the fabulous island of Gran Canaria. That's it. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.